What's going on everyone? Steven here from TechMaker TV. Yesterday I published a video, uh, it's called Metaprogramming uh, Part 2 or something like that. And um, I had a little bit of trouble uh, with some of the code I was working on and I got a really helpful tip from a subscriber, Ethan, on how to more uh, easily reset the uh, IRB session or the console session that I'm working in. And it's so nice that I wanted to go ahead and uh, just show you how it works here. Uh, so let's take a look at how it works and then I'll show you the code and I'll put a link to his original, um, what was it? paste bin or something. Anyway, I'll put a link to his original code uh, down in the description. So basically this is how it works. So instead of running IRB, um, and we're going to run rake console here. And it's going to look similar, but it's actually using pry instead of IRB. And it's going to go ahead and load some of the files that we want by default. So again, you'll need to check out the episode, probably the last couple episodes on metaprogramming if you want to see what's really going on with this actual code. Uh, but we get our data frame uh, preloaded. Now what's really cool is I can actually just say reload. So let's say that I made some changes to the files and I wanted them to take effect. If I say reload, it's actually going to look at all of the files in my current directory that got loaded um, whenever we were in rake console and it's going to reload the, just those files. So that's pretty slick. Um, and in combination with the other helpful advice I got with Control L, this is going to make my life a lot easier. So I really appreciate all the feedback you guys are giving me. So let's take a look at the code and see what's going on. So essentially what we needed to do was create this rake file inside of our project directory. And then we're creating a task. So rake is short for Ruby make and it's a utility for creating tasks. If you've been doing uh, Rails development for very long, I think back in like Rails 3, maybe even Rails 4, instead of Rails, you know, and then running a task like Rails DB Migrate or something, it used to be Rake DB Migrate. So um, Rake's been around for a long time. And um, anyway, so essentially all we're doing here is we're requiring, we're requiring pry, and uh, then we're requiring relative this data frame file. Now if you have a different, um, the reason we're only requiring the data frame file is because the data frame goes on and requires all the other stuff. So I haven't played with this enough to know if I need to change up how I'm doing this a bit and actually I'm double requiring pry and so on and so forth. So I may need to go change up how I'm doing my require statements a little bit. Um, but it seems to work so far, so I'll play around with it and report back if I need to change anything. Um, but anyway, so we're requiring this, and then we are uh, have this reload method, which essentially gets exposed to our console environment. Um, and basically what it does is it looks in loaded features, and it scans for this uh, path segment ref. And so... That's just because that's what my directory is called. I named it that because I was using this for some refactoring. Um, so it's whatever path your folder is. It's basically the folder name, right? Um, and then we're clearing out the arguments and running pry. So, or pry start. So let's take a look. The only thing I really want to dig into very much is this loaded features, which is something that essentially is part of uh, programming in Ruby that I was really unaware of. So if we look at this, basically what this is going to have in here is a whole bunch of stuff that's all of the things that are currently loaded in your current Ruby environment, I guess. Um, so it's all of the various um, classes and so on and so forth. So whenever we require this data frame class, um, it's loading all of its stuff and these things are located in this directory, so it's just kind of sensible, right? So we're scanning this loaded features, so everything that's loaded in Ruby. We're looking for things that match this ref directory, and then each one of those we're just calling load. Now, um, this is, I, I need to do a little bit of reading on this because it seems to be working fine, um, but I need to test a little bit more because I'm wondering if I need to switch these to require relative over here. Um, in Ruby, if you require something, 
like there's two ways well there's more than two probably but the two kind of main ways that i saw for um let me quit and run a regular irb session here so if i load data frame like this cannot load such file so if i load data frame.rb and I, i'm not sure why i have to say dot rb um, i can i can reload it by just calling load like this if i require something i think can i require it still so once i require it once i well i can't require it twice basically so i'm not exactly sure how that plays together so if i require it and then i load it does it reload it i assume it does that's what it looks like so maybe i'm fine with the way that this works um Anyway, I need to brush up on how all of this stuff works, I guess. But I just wanted to give a quick shout out because I thought this was really, really handy. Um, I think it might be interesting to try to turn this into some kind of like um, command line tool or something that we can just use elsewhere or without having to create a rake file all the time. So that might be something to kind of explore and play with, um, especially because I'm doing a lot of this sort of console work for these videos. So anyway, um, hopefully you guys found that useful. It's going to be just kind of a quick thing. Got a couple of other episodes coming out later today. So uh, I will talk to you then.